Uh, right now on the line with us is Dr. Jerome Corsi, the author of several books, including his most recent, it just came out, Silent No More, How I Became a Political Prisoner of Mueller's Witch Hunt. His website is CorsiNation.com. You can tweet him at Jerome underscore Corsi, C-O-R-S-I. Jerry, welcome back to the program. Uh, Tom, good to be back with you. Thank you. Um, I... I got a couple of serious questions for you, and I want to get into this. And for people who don't know who you are, let me just, just you know, you, you are, were the author of the book on Swift Boat Veterans uh, that essentially took down John Kerry. Uh, you were the author of the book on Obama's birth certificate that animated Donald Trump and, and created this whole, this whole uh, thing. Uh, you wrote a book about the coming merger with Mexico and Canada, the 9-11 Truth Movement, um, Hitler, I mean, a lot of uh, interesting things. Um, and, and you've had a very, very consequential impact on American politics, particularly that 2004 election, uh, the John Kerry election. And, you know, you and I are on opposite sides of all these things, obviously, but you have had a, a really substantial impact on the national debate and on the Republican Party. That said, you, you were, you know, you, I believe the, the charge against you is the, or the Mueller is going after you that has something to do with Julian Assange. What, what do you think was in it for Julian Assange helping the Trump campaign? Was it just, you know, uh, hatred of Hillary Clinton or was it he, want, he thought this would be the biggest story ever? Or, I mean, what, what was his deal? I guess you'll have to ask Julian Assange, and I don't uh, agree with your assumption that he was trying to help. Um, Donald Trump. I mean, I, uh, at any rate, that was not the issue I'm dealing with, Tom. Uh, the issue I'm dealing with is that I went in, you know, to I was subpoenaed to go before the Mueller grand jury on August 28th. I went in voluntarily to assist them. I turned over my computers. I had a um, time, machine, time machine application on the laptop, the Apple laptop, laptop I've been using. It backed up my computer four times a month completely in 2016 and 2017. I handed that over. Even when I quit using the computer, I didn't throw away the computer in the time machine. I kept them and handed them over. I handed over all of my email accounts, usernames and passwords. I uh, handed over my Verizon accounts, even though, you know, signed permission for them to get my Verizon phone numbers, even though Verizon wouldn't give me my own phone numbers without a court order. So I went in to be fully cooperative. And uh, after 40 hours, um, the last half of this was a nightmare, especially because I, I could not give the special counselor what they desperately wanted. They had assumed that I was the link between Roger Stone and Julian Assange, and their theory, which was clear, was that it was going to be you know Roger Stone, Jerry Corsi of all people, and then Assange, and WikiLeaks, and then Roger Stone, Steve Bannon, and Donald Trump, and that was their collusion link for their... Right, right. and you're asserting theory. that you're not yeah. that, you're asserting that you are not that link. I, um. did, I don't know John, Julian Assange. I've never spoken with, communicated with, emailed, written. I have no communication with Julian Assange or WikiLeaks, and I have no intermediary. Yeah. Well, if you're innocent, Jerry, I, you know, I hope that uh, you, know, you don't suffer the consequences. But uh, let, me, let me share with you a clip. This is uh, from Rachel Maddow's ba Bagman podcast. Um, and it is the vice president of the United States saying on the record, and he did this several times and he even wrote about it in his book, um, that he believed that the president of the United States was uh, capable and, in fact, maybe even intended to hire a hit squad to kill him. This is Spiro Agnew talking about Richard Nixon. Agnew says he left because of a death threat from the White House. He quotes Nixon Chief of Staff Alexander Haig urging him to resign with the words, the president has a lot of power. Don't forget that. Agnew writes that the remarks had a chill through his body. He took it as an innuendo that anything could happen. He might have, in Agnew's words, a convenient accident, an interpretation that even today he refuses to disown. And here's Agnew. I didn't know what General Haig meant when he said anything may be in the offing, things may get nasty and dirty. There's no doubt in my mind that these things are possible. I don't say it was a probability, but I do say it was a possibility. You think then that there were men around Richard Nixon, either in the White House staff or 
in the official mechanism of the CIA who were capable of killing a vice president of the United States if they felt he was an embarrassment. I don't doubt that at all. So there you go. Do you, do you think that, you know, is, it seems that a number of people who have come into or, or spun out of the orbit of Donald Trump are acting rather frightened. Is this kind of conversation going, which was a, you know, a very real concern uh, of Spiro Agnew's that, that Nixon might order him killed because of what he knew. Uh, is this kind of stuff floating around with regard to Trump? Wait, you're asking me if, what are you asking me, Tom? I'm not sure. I, I'm asking, asking you if you or anybody in these circles that, that, that are implicated in these uh, Trump crimes are concerned that uh, you know, a guy who has been doing business with the mob for years and years uh, might have, uh, you know, might, might order you killed. Uh, I, well, I disagree with your characterization of Donald Trump as, um, with the mobs, but at any rate, uh, I have no knowledge, and certainly I've not been threatened, and I don't, I'm not worried uh, about a hit squad being called on me. I'm not concerned about any of that. That's and you don't think any of these other guys are either? You don't think well, that Roger Stone is worried I, about that? I didn't take the mind-reading course at Harvard. It's a bad mistake. Well, you know Roger I Stone, don't you? Guys. Yeah, but I certainly have not uh, asked that question. Roger, why don't you ask that question? Yeah, I, I know, you know, you if you want to come on the show, I'd be glad to. Sure, uh, go ahead. Yeah. So, so you, you, you are not concerned that if, uh, no. well, I guess, I guess because you're, you're taking the side of the president here also, aren't um, you? I mean, I, I, you're I not doing question, this because you're afraid of him? Tom, I think the whole question is preposterous. I'm not afraid of Donald Trump. I'm not afraid of anybody, Tom. Not afraid of you. Not afraid of anybody. Well, so, you know, look. suing the federal government for hundreds of millions of dollars uh, uh, sort of reinforces that uh, that bad guy notion, I suppose. Are, are you concerned, Jerry? That that I mean, you're 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 taking on the people who are trying to take you on, yeah. and and you're suing them for basically, uh, you say, f trying to force you to. To lie about you know this connection between Assange and and Roger Stone. Yes, that's one of the allegations. There are others, but yes, that's one of them. I, you know, it's it's not real common that people who are the targets of a criminal investigation, and clearly you are, that people who are the targets of a criminal investigation would would go out and preemptively sue the police who are looking into them. I mean, it, it just seems like that's well, actually, Tom, that's yeah, that's going to end as a train wreck, Jerry. Tom, you're also wrong. I was not a target of the investigation. Well, why uh, do they come and, and, and over, pick up all your over, stuff? Well, if, if you let me explain it, Tom. Over and over, the uh, special prosecutor team and the FBI said, I'm not a target. They wanted me for um, testimony. Mm -hmm. And I was, was giving them, honestly, everything I could give them. Uh, they now say they wanted me to, uh, they, when I, they couldn't get what they wanted, they blew it all up. I mean, I kept saying over and over again. They even allowed me to amend my testimony multiple times because I told them my memory of 2016 is not good. I, I'm not a human tape recorder. You can't push a button and have me remember a specific conversation or a specific email in 2016. I can't do it. And so you were, in your amendments, you were adding to things that you had said as opposed no, to saying, uh, oh, that was uh, wrong, here's my correction of it. My amendment were saying that was wrong. Here's my correction. Okay. Did you first, lie the first time? Or, no, or? Uh, Tom, Tom. First day, uh, I could not reload my 2016 emails. I had this broken down 17 inch laptop. Wouldn't work anymore. I didn't want to change its status when I quit using it in 2018. I handed it over. I said, I haven't looked at my 2016 emails. Yeah. First day, they asked me a question. They say, Did you want somebody to go see Julian Assange? I said, No. Well, they pull out this email from 2016 in July when I was in Italy on my 25th wedding anniversary with my wife and family, and Roger Stone sent me an email, said, someone needs to go to see Assange, and over, you know, 20 seconds, I pass it on to Ted Malik in London. Mm -hmm. They said, Ted, from Roger, Jerry. I gave it very little thought. I forgot the email. Now, yeah. when and that I, has come when back I to haunt you. Home, but Go Jerry, home and look at your email. Tom, let me finish. Yeah. You want to ask a question? You let me. Well, answer. we only have a minute and a half left. Well, I don't Jerry. care, Tom. I'm going to an answer. I, I do have I a question for you, though. I looked at my emails, Tom. I looked at my emails. I saw it. I came back and said I was wrong. They accepted the amendment. Okay. If I'm in the prosecutor's office, if I'm in Mueller's office, and I'm looking at you as a witness, this is a guy who lied about the Obama birth certificate, 
who who uh, who lied about John Kerry's military lie, service. I disagree with all those characterizations. Well, they're, 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 they're characterized as lies. Why should they trust you if you have been um, basically, you know, peddling these these you can call them whatever you want, but things that don't seem to be true. Well, Tom, you just validated one of the key points of my silent no more. They were persecuting me because they disagreed with me politically. And I think that's out of bounds and it's unacceptable. And that's one of the reasons I filed a criminal complaint against the Department of Justice on the Mueller investigation and why I filed a $350 million lawsuit against them in federal court. Yeah. And you really don't think that this is, the, that you're, you're cooking your own goose, that you're going to no, be in Tom, trouble here? I'm gonna, I'm going to pursue these because this, I believe, what I'm doing is true. And this is not because you're trying to protect Trump. No, Trump's can take care of himself. If if Trump is guilty of these campaign violations, the campaign finance violations that have been, you know, that Michael Cohen just pled guilty to, do you think he should go to prison or be impeached? Tom, any person in the United States who's guilty of a crime should face the consequences and go to prison. That includes the president of the United States, whether no matter who the president. So are you Jerry Corsi calling for Trump to go to jail if he no, if he's I'm actually convicted for, of these crimes? I'm calling for Mueller to quit running a pu politically motivated and operating in a criminal uh, prosecutorial misconduct mode, both of which I'm alleging, and I intend to prove either in that criminal complaint I filed with the Department of Justice or in the lawsuit I filed in the Federal District Court. Yeah. Well, it's going to get it's going to get very very interesting. Dr. Jerome Corsi, his uh, his new book is uh, where to go here. Which Silent yeah, no Silent more. No More. Silent Thank no you, more. Jerry. Si sure. Silent No More: How I Became a Political Prisoner of Mueller's Wet Witch Hunt. CorsiNation.com, and you can tweet him at Jerome underscore Corsi. Jerry, uh, you know, good luck, good talking to you. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for dropping by. Yeah, we'll be right back. Yep, yeah, we'll be right back. Oh, and happy holidays.